Today we're diving into something that every coder needs in their arsenal, the top 10 VS Code extensions for faster coding. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeremy, and this channel is all about helping you to become a better developer with the latest tools and techniques. All right, let's kick things off with number one. Up first on our list is probably the biggest time saver of all, GitHub's Copilot. So to install this extension, we'll just click on extensions and search for GitHub Copilot. And here we can see it's the first option and I'm just gonna click on install. And now once it's installed, we'll see a new chat icon in the activity bar. Here we can see that I'm already signed in, but if you're not signed in, you'll see a green box asking you to sign in. I should note that using the GitHub Copilot extension is not free. And while you do get a free trial, I can't remember how long that is, it does cost $10 a month. So one of the ways you can save time is by just asking Copilot questions. So for example, how do I create a function in JavaScript? And we can see that we get an answer to our question. We can also copy this code and paste it directly into our file. We can also hit the at key and get what's called agents, which in simple terms is context to what you're asking. So how to do something in the terminal, how to do something in VS Code, or how to do something in your workspace. Another way to use this app is the inline suggestions. So let's say that I wanna create a function called rename. I'll start typing rename, and we see that it's suggesting code here. I'm just gonna hit tab to accept this, and now we can see that it's suggesting an entire block of code. So I'm just gonna hit tab again, and now we have an entire function that Copilot completely wrote for us without really any instructions at all. And we can see that it takes the hero, the name, and it changes the name of the hero, which is what I wanted. We can also highlight code and then right click, come down to Copilot and start inline chat. And then here we can say forward slash explain, which is explain how the selected code works. We'll hit enter. And now we see that it's opened up the GitHub Copilot chat and it's giving us an explanation of exactly what this code does. So we can see that we've declared a function, and so forth. A quick tip here that I forgot to mention is you can take this chat window and move it anywhere you want it. You can even open the chat in a new window with the use of VS Code's new floating editor. Number two on the list is not really an extension that you install, it's already built into VS Code. It's called Emmet. Emmet allows you to type a shorthand syntax to generate HTML. So here we are in VS Code, and if I type dot my dash div and hit tab, we can see that we get a div with a class of my div. We can also type the hash sign my dash div and we can see that we have a div with an ID of my div. Now let's take this a step further. Let's say we want a div with a class of my dash div and inside that div we want an unordered list with three list items. So we'll just do times three and hit tab. And here we can see that we get a div with an unordered list and three list items. I have an entire video covering Emmet, and you can check it out right here. Number three on the list is Peacock. Peacock allows you to change the color of your VS Code workspace. It's ideal for when you have multiple VS Code instances open, are using Live Share, or VS Code's remote features. It makes it easy to quickly identify your editor. So again, we'll just come back to extensions and type in Peacock. Here we can see it's created by John Papa, and we'll click on install. So if I open up the command palette, and search for Peacock, I can see that we have several options here. I'm just gonna come down and select surprise me with a random color. And now we can see that I have a green border around this window. Now let's say I have another VS Code window open. I can quickly identify which VS Code window is which just based on the color around the window. I can see that this window has the Angular project and this window has the Angular Hero example project. And if I want to reset the color, I just open up the command palette, type in Peacock, and choose Reset Workspace Colors. Peacock automatically changes your VS Code's editor color when you're using Live Share or using VS Code's remote features. This can be very helpful to know exactly what you're editing. Number four on the list is Live Server. It allows you to launch a local server with Live Reload directly from VS Code. So we're just gonna click on Install. And now once it's installed, we have an option in the bottom right corner that says Go Live. Click to run Live Server. So I have a basic web page structure here. And if I just click on go live, we can see that it started the server on port 5500 and it automatically opened that web page in Google Chrome. Here we can see the alert and the page. And now if I come back to the HTML, I can make some changes. So I'm just gonna say, welcome to live server test page with live reload and hit save. We can see that Google Chrome automatically reloads and we can see our changes. 
We can also open up VS Code's ports panel with command J and then clicking on ports so we can forward port 5500. And here we can see that it's asking us to sign in. And once we're signed in, we see that we have a forwarded address. We can change that visibility to public. Here we can see that it's warning us that anyone can access the site. So we'll just click continue. And here we can see that we have an address that we can give to anyone to access the site while we develop on it. I do want to point out that you should definitely not use this as a replacement for a web server. This is just for development purposes only and should only be used temporarily. So to stop forwarding this port, we're just gonna come and hover over this little X. And now we can see that the forwarded port is gone. Number five on our list is remote SSH. It allows you to connect to a remote server and make changes directly on that server within VS Code. So back in VS Code, we're just gonna install the remote SSH extension. And once it's installed, we have a new option in the activity bar for Remote Explorer. Here we can see where I was playing with this plugin before. So to connect to a server via SSH, we're just gonna come and click on the plus sign. And I have a Docker container running SSH server. So I'm just gonna type in SSH space, my username, which is SSH user at localhost, and then colon and the port, which in my case is 2222. And then I'll hit enter. And here it's asking me which configuration file I want to update. I'm just gonna go with the top one. And then now it's saying we added a host. So I'm just gonna click on connect and it opens a new VS Code window and it's asking for the password. We'll go ahead and enter that. And now it's setting up the VS Code instance. Now I have a VS Code window that's connected via SSH to my Docker container. I can open a folder and then modify these files. I can also open up the terminal with control back tick and run commands directly on that server. This can save you a lot of time so that you're not pulling down files, making changes, and then pushing them back up. Number six on our list is Code Runner. It allows you to quickly run code snippets or files directly in VS Code. So here we have the Code Runner extension and I'm just gonna click on install. And now if I open up some code, here's some JavaScript, I can hit control alt N to run that code. And we can see the output here in the output panel. But this is JavaScript. Let's try running some Go. We'll hit Control Alt N and we can see that output as well. We can also do the same for Python, Ruby, and even SAS. We can also highlight some code and hit Control Alt N to run only that block of code. This works great as a scratch sheet to test out blocks of code and see what it does. Number seven on the list is Git Lens. It adds a ton of Git functionality to VS Code. So here is the Git Lens extension, and I'm just gonna click on install. And then we get a welcome page to Git Lens. We also get two new icons in the activity bar, Git Lens and Git Lens Inspect. There are so many features that Git Lens adds to VS Code, that it would really just need a video of its own. But one of my favorite features is the line annotations. When we're modifying a file, we get the git blame information, who modified the file, when, and the commit. If we hover over it, we get even more information about it, and we can even go view that commit. This can save you a ton of time when you're trying to track down who worked on something last. Number eight on the list is batch rename. I find myself renaming groups of files more often than you would think. And this extension saves me a ton of time when doing these renames. So once this extension is installed, we can just open up the Explorer. And let's say I wanted to rename these hero files to hero. I can just select the directory and all three files. I did that by holding down shift and clicking. And then I can right click and choose batch rename. Here we get an editor where we can rename these files. So I'm just gonna use multiple cursors and rename it to be hero. Now, if I save this file, it'll automatically rename those files and the directory. Number nine on our list is the bookmarks extension. It allows you to bookmark lines of code in your files so that you can jump back to them later. Once the bookmarks extension is installed, we get a new icon in the activity bar for the bookmarks. If we click on it, we see that we have no bookmarks yet. So let's go bookmark some stuff. I'm just gonna open up some random pieces of code and then I'm just gonna press command option K and now I can see that I have a little bookmark icon next to that line of code. We also see that we have a one on our bookmarks activity bar icon. Let's open up another file and I'm just gonna bookmark line 34. So again, that's command option K. And now if I open up the bookmarks panel, I can see the two files that have bookmarks and the bookmark for each file. If I add another bookmark in this hero.service file, we can see that it gets added over here in the bookmarks. Now to navigate back and forth, I just click on each of the bookmarks 
to be taken directly to that file. This can save you a ton of time when you're adding a new feature in a project that involves multiple locations. Before I get to my last extension, if you feel like this video is providing value, consider hitting the like button down below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. It would really help the channel out. And now on to the last extension, number 10, to do tree. This extension searches your workspace for comments like to do and fix me, and then displays them in a tree view in the sidebar. So here we have the to do tree extension installed. And like many other extensions, it adds an icon to the activity bar. If we click on it, we can see that we get a drop down, And then here it says hero service.ts. And then we have two to do's in that file. I can click on it and it'll take us to that file. Let's open up another file, app component.ts. And let's just add a comment, fix me. And we'll just say rename the title. And now if I come back to the to do tree, we can see a drop down for the other file. And if we click on it, we can see the fix me comment. This extension can save you a lot of time when you're going through your project looking for things that need to be done. And there you have it, 10 VS Code extensions that are sure to speed up your coding and make your life a whole lot easier. If you're looking to take your VS Code experience to the next level, check out my other video on the multi-root workspaces in VS Code. It will show you how to open multiple projects in VS Code and then customize VS Code for each of those projects. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.